Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Casey here. I want to say thank you and uh, thanks for checking me out. Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, today, I just wanted to, you know, basically make a video and break down um, dividend investing, kind of a little bit further in detail. Uh, I've got a couple of videos out there right now that I've already covered um, with, you know, like the different types of investment tools that you can use to create passive income with dividend investing. Uh, but I want to break down a little bit further with, uh, you know, things such as learning how to read financial statements, uh, income statements, there's another word for that, balance sheets, um, you know, kind of understanding what you're looking at when it comes to a stock and knowing if it's undervalued or overvalued. Because uh, that's pretty important when you're, when you're investing for, you know, the long haul. Uh, especially if you're looking for passive income, you want to, you know, you want to make investments in solid, sound companies. And the only way to do that, really, is to understand uh, financials, okay? Financial information and data that comes out on a quarterly basis with these companies, all right? Now, it does require a little bit of work uh, on your behalf as an investor, but, you know, if you're looking for... Uh, Good returns as an investor that's that's part of the game all right now this book that I read here it's uh, by, it's, it's by Don Schreiber jr. and Gary E. Stroik and it's called all about dividend investing see it right there uh, basically they cover tried and true ways to take emotion out of the investment equation uh, strategies for increasing your retirement income and how to predict returns and guard against inflation in any market Okay, now these are all good things that you want to learn when you're, you know, laying your money on the table and investing with the company because there's one thing we all know, stock markets are very, you know, they're, they're very volatile. Okay, they go up and down in price all the time. All right, so you want to be able to guard against, you know, some of your investments going down in price and losing money. All right. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything that's in the book today. That would take way too long. It would bore the crap out of you, probably. Um, so I'm just going to keep it simple. And today we're going to cover the income statement uh, because that is part of the basics of, you know, learning what it is you're looking at when you're you're getting ready to invest with a company. Okay. Now the income statement. Um, I've got something written out here. This is pretty much an example that was in the book. And I just laid it out here for you so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. Uh, <clears throat> but basically, the income, the income statement here, we're just going to go with an example of company XYZ, okay? Uh, and the reason why we're, we're just going with this and not an actual company is because the, the data from, say, like a, you know Walmart or somebody like that, the data that I'll be putting up here is going to be... Um, it's going to be obsolete, uh, just basically, be, basically because we'd be going off of numbers uh, that are, you know, from the past, and I want to stay away from that. Okay, so this this example here, let's just say, is for company X Y Z, and it is present uh, present day figures that we're looking at. So, on your income statement, guys, you're going to have something that looks like this. You're going to have sales. Um, cost of goods sold, you know, if they're like in retail or something like that. It may be, you know, mentioned a little bit different than that on, you know, depending on what, what company you're looking at. Uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something, you know, similar to this, cost of goods. Uh, you're also going to have gross profits. Um, you'll have net income, things of that nature. These are some of the things, there's going to be a lot more information on the, uh, income statements uh, a lot more than what I'm showing you here these are just the things that you want to pay attention to the rest of it um, you you know you can kind of you can use uh, for different formulas and stuff like that and get really advanced with looking for certain things uh, to determine you know if if your stocks gonna be you know better in value than say another stock okay but for just for the sake of beginners and keeping this real simple the first things you want to look at on an income statement for a company are going to be the sales cost of goods gross profits and net income all right
And out of these uh, four that I just mentioned here, you're basically going to want to, you're going to want to compare. So your sales here, you're going to compare a couple things. Your sales, which would be, you know, for this example, $16,800,000, okay? You're going to compare your sales uh, to your, your gross profit or vice versa. You're, you'll compare your gross profit to your sales. Uh, that's basically the way you want to do it. Gross profit to sales. That's, that's what you want to compare on your income statement, okay? Now, this number is $11,725,000 for gross profits, all right? So, when you're comparing these, uh, what you're looking for here is 50% uh, or higher. When I say 50% or higher, basically what you're going to be looking for is this number here in gross profits. It needs to be at least 50% of this number, so 50% of the 16,800,000, all right? At least 50% or higher. And in this case, if you're looking at this, it is higher than 50%. That's what you're looking for on your income statements, okay? And that's the first thing that you wanna start with. Uh, now your, your net income here, down below, if you can see this, it's $2,188,000. Okay, now this is the second thing that you can look at. A lot of investors are concerned with uh, earnings per share, and earnings per share uh, is just that. So how you would figure that, that number for earnings per share, is just taking uh, your net income, and you're going to divide it by the number of shares outstanding. Okay, that's simply, that, those are basic things that you need to do when you're looking at your income statement. Now, like I said, there's other information you can pull from the income statement and run in different formulas. We're not gonna go into those today because, I mean, it's it, a lot, it can get very complex. It can confuse and, you know, people who are just beginning. So we're gonna stay away from that. I'm just gonna cover the basics here for simply looking at an income statement and knowing, you know, what numbers you need to look at, okay? So that that's exactly what you would wanna look at uh, and again, this is based off the book that I read. Okay, it's a great book. Um, if you haven't read it, check it out. You can go on Amazon or, um, you know, get it online or at a bookstore. But I would highly recommend, you know, at least taking a look at it, especially if you're looking to, uh, you know, start generating some passive income through dividends. Okay, and that's, again, when you're buying into a company, they're going to pay you a paycheck uh, simply for owning shares of their company, okay? Um, it's a great way to kind of secure your nest egg or, you know, when you're in retirement, uh, you know, and just kind of use it as a, an extra tool to, to add on to, you know, the money that you might be withdrawing from, say, like an annuity, okay? So, again, the, the thing is, guys, with investing and trying to prepare for retirement you want to have income you don't want to outlive your income so the name of the game is is getting the income and one of the most powerful things you can use is the power of compounding through dividends to do that all right now I'm I'm not going to try to get too much off course here with the income statements but uh, the reason why you might want to look into dividend investing um, is because again of the income but on top of that learning how to read the income statements is going to uh, help you better understand again you know if your company is undervalued or if it's overvalued because the last thing you want to do really when you're when you're investing um, is buying in high okay and then watching your your stock price drop and you panic and you get you know completely flustered and, you, and then you sell well the problem with that is you're selling at the low so you're losing money you want to stay in okay um, and we'll get into some of that later with like some more videos I'm gonna probably put out there on risk management and just con you know controlling your emotions and stuff like that uh, because it's very important that you know what you're looking at when you're when you're investing in a, a company Okay, 
And so I'm gonna I'm gonna release some other videos here um, on balance sheets. Uh, there's stuff in here such as oh where was it? Um, statement of retained earnings. We'll cover stuff like that. Uh, we'll go into valuation ratios, uh, debt coverage ratio, quick ratios, and I'll break it down in individual videos for you how to uh, calculate out those, you know, those ratios that I was just talking about so you kind of get an idea of how they all work. And when you tie them all together, you can really break it down and basically screen your stocks that you're looking at. Uh, so that you're making better investments, okay? Uh, anyways, I'm done for today. It's simple. I'm going to just keep this short, and uh, I'll be releasing some more videos here soon, guys. All right, take care.